Again, we got four color elementals played by Ryan Hayes going up against Grixis Food played by Gabriel Ibadi. And It just continues to blow my mind that Gigantha just goes into in any deck, really. Uh, at this point, if what what decks are are you not able to put it in? It feels like just what uh, a deck that you may want to play counterspell in. Yeah, but that's and that's kind of your toss up. Do you want the extra card at all times when you can buy and put it in your hand? Uh, it's generally popular when say like Liliana Liliana is a present mm -hmm. in the format where you want to just have something to discard or you have a elemental, for example. Obviously, you can't play endurance with it. Or those, but like things that require you to pitch cards to pay mm -hmm. sometimes is why you play it. Um, that's why you'll see like um, blue white control or four color, they'll buy Yorion just to pitch it to a solitude yep. or something like that. But four color starting off pretty strong. They turn two, played a Ren, basically drawing the card every turn, the land card, ensuring that they'll make their land drops. And. I said, I don't know what happened there. Sorry, I didn't. I forgot to put the overlay back on those scenes. I'll yeah, we did some pack openings the other day, so some things might be missing at random. We'll get that fixed, of course. But followed up by a Teferi. This is probably about the best start for Ryan you can ask for in terms <laughs> of like make sure he can't play on your turn ever. It's the strangest three mana boomerang. Yeah, you just get to <laughs> bounce a saga. Reset it. That's so important against the food deck that wants to try to get to the cookbook. And he, another three mana boomerang. It's great. So, Connor, a good question for you at this spot of the game where you've had your saga pounce <laughs> twice. What What do you think Gabriel's got to do to try to claw back into this when Ryan's got such a good head start? Uh, he needs to. Game needs to assess Ryan's hand at this point, understanding that he's burned through to ferry to ferry has a run in play, using the same lands every time. Also has seen bobble. The cards are getting smaller in Ryan's hands, and as far as far as what threats Gabe could be looking at. As far as we know, like, yeah, there's there's a heat in there. There's lands, but Gabe really. Probably just needs like one or two decent turns to be able to put himself in the lead, like in a really strong position. Yeah. The problem is we are getting to see a lot of cards in Ryan's hand as long as Gabriel. Um, one of the things that you would put to know why you were going is that Gabriel actually discarded a land to hand size, mm -hmm. um, which might go ahead to show us that he didn't have a daredevil because like that would be a prime opportunity to get the daredevil in the bins. So whenever you play your cookbook later, you just get it back. Yep. So you don't actually lose that card where I mean to be fair getting your saga bounced a couple times You might have accumulated a couple lands. You might not need them true at this point And how much more important are your uh, black leaf cliffs than pitching a saga? You want to keep that saga you want to be able to go and and tutor up whatever like say cookbook here in a moment Another inter interesting note. So far, we've this has been called Greek's Food. Taryn, I believe, has a deck list over there. I'm not entirely sure what the blue is for, because I don't think I see anything blue in the hand. Uh, there was one time seed I saw. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. just the turns. Yeah, okay. but, but here's the here's the main issue now. <laughs> the emblem. We have a red emblem already, because of the very setting the clock back so far. Gabriel feeling obligated to remove to remove the baby Teferi that gets followed up by another Teferi, bouncing a Saga. And now if Ryan has any spells of relevance, he's been collecting lands every turn because he's buying them back with Ren. Has another Ren to follow it up to put another land in hand. But uh, and on Gabriel's side, we have a Saga. Gabe goes, I'm going to make two three threes. Yes. Oh, oh your bump. camera's a little bump there, huh? Pac-Man Taren going out there to fix the cameras. We get a cookbook. Game. I look through trying to figure out if there's maybe not a better option here. Uh, this is where you could see idealistically sometimes like maybe a pith needle come into play to try to stop the Ren from grabbing these lands back. Or it's fairy to stop from bouncing anything, but you should be able to get rid of the fairy, hopefully, with one of your sagas that can attack this turn. 
hopefully a big word because Ryan had to, had to expend actually like any other spells besides a single one holy heat at one point. Yeah, the the unfortunate side for Gabe is understanding that this clock is going to keep running down further and further because Ryan is going to have a little bit of a hard time really closing this game here. Daredevil cycle comes into play. Ephemerate and uh, prismatic ending in hand along with the tef another Teferi. And Ryan's in this weird spot where he doesn't necessarily have a way to end the game besides like maybe getting a Yorion and putting it into play. But Gabe's most likely never going to get able be able to finish the game on the fact that we have instant speed prismatic ending all the time with the Ren now. Yep. As long as this baby fairy stays in play and gets to tick up repeatedly. Because now you're going to get the constant land buyback that you ever want. Unholy Heat's also in the yard to be active and played at any time, which is instant speed in itself. So if you lose the fairy, you're not out. And you just constantly have these land drops and you do your game plan while also removing anything in this Grixis deck. Because the mana cost is not that high ever. And then Ryan just rips another prismatic ending. Yeah. So. <laughs> prismatic for zero. Feels good. Prismatic. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Prismatic again. So. For clarity. Ryan's just going to use the lands as a way to show that he's buying it back. Well, with the retraceability of the Ren emblem. There's an Omnath. Or as Ryan likes to call it, John Nathington. Along with TJ and Don Ham. Mm -hmm. Them three were supposed to play, I believe, the exact same deck list today. But TJ made a pivot and is now playing Amulet Titan. Yeah, he is. I love that. Yeah, so <laughs> surprising for Ryan comes down and like plays the uh, Teferi again. Like, I feel as though maybe Ryan's wanting to like set up a bigger turn next turn with the Omnath, like play the fetch now, have it sit there. Next turn, play Omnath, land, fetch, fetch. Well, I, I also think it comes to the point that you were bringing up earlier as well, is because we staggered Gabriel so much, like, with the Saga bounces, mm -hmm. that he's most likely to have more interaction early. Yeah. And if Omnath's, like, your kind of only threat that you kind of have in hand, I think you want to set up for a turn that you might be able to protect it. I don't know if Ryan's playing Counterspell. I don't believe they are. But, like, you could see him waiting for that to, like, have with discard. Or having a counter spell with retrace, which seems pretty strong. <laughs> All right. Gabe doing his typical Gabe thing where he talks with his hands and uh, tells his opponent to relax and everything's fine. Fair enough. I'm getting a better look at Ryan's hand. It looks about like three lands, Prismatic Ending, Omnath. Yorion. And a Yorion. Maybe it's only two lands. It's two lands, Prismatic Ending, Omnath, Yorion. Gabriel has Asmos, but we're going to see one of them get heated. Ah, heated. Oh, he drew the Risen Wraith. So now you're about to see the value that Four Color can put on play if Ryan decides he wants to do that. Ryan's horsely being a control player is generally a little more patient in these spots than most players might be. In full control, for the most part, might as well stay in full control mode if you can.
Three mana. <laughs> We're putting the reef in play. Reef is the goodest of boys. The honestly probably one of the nicest three mana one ones. Yeah. Really nice with it. Here comes Omnath. There is a fetch land follow up if Ryan chooses to do so. Might want to just to get himself out of that high explosive damage that sometimes these food decks can do. <laughs> blast, blast. Yeah. So getting yourself out of that area of danger feels probably a lot more comfortable because in theory you could be thinking that you're at three from the last invitational <laughs> series ryan was actually on the back end of getting <laughs> blasted yeah yeah well, yeah like, he's been here before it, the the face of when he points at me in the confusion of oh oh not not the omnath me it, yeah, he had a Ragavan in play, yeah, rag. and Gabe just goes, Galvanic Blast you, and he goes, me? And he was like, wait, I'm not, like, 12, that means I'm dead. Like, so, Ryan's definitely been here before, so we might be taking a little bit more of a patient route this time around. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to become the back end of a joke this time. I'll, I'm going to link the tweet for people in chat. <laughs> Yeah, we're just trying to probably figure out, for the most part, some of the iterations that Ryan's put in the deck. Yeah. I can imagine Gabe kind of knew for a while, once that Ren 6 emblem goes up, so many things and oh. options that you could do that people just didn't know what the best lines were. Yikes! Well, hopping back into our future match. Uh, Gabe definitely racing off to the head start here. We've seen a ring Ooh. come in, probably down tick, killing the Ragavan. To catch back up, we're getting thought seized, and Ryan points at the Emrakul. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but it it might be hitting the bin. Who knows? Later, did you know? Turn four, or turn five, that they can cast Emrakul because of Omnath. Yeah. If they have Delirium, mm -hmm. and then land, and lands. they go fetch land fetch, they have nine mana to cast that Emrakul and take your turn on turn five. And then you're a sad little boy. So, Gabe, thinking pretty hard on this turn. Dress downs are kind of annoying. Leyline binding's annoying. But, again, like we just mentioned, the Omnath and Emrakul plans in hand. So, you don't really want to take dress down because it's redundant anyway, and it doesn't kind of like whatever. It shuts off your thing for a turn on Incept a good way. But it, it does kills draw Ryan cards. Yeah. And that's kind of the hard part. And he has any type of mana that he really wants so yeah. far. But Omnath gets taken away. I, that makes the most sense, I think, in yeah. terms for Gabe. Probably just hoping to have more interaction for the Emrakul later. Yeah. just Or try to get him dead before that. True. And then without an Omnath kind of accelerating an Emrakul out, a lot of times you will be able to actually kill them before they get to play it. Mm. That's kind of one of the downsides of Emrakul, of course. When you have anything... Even if you're saying at minimum it's going to be a nine, eight mana spell, it's still nine or eight mana. Mm -hmm. Still a lot. But so Leila, Ryan's hand is definitely interesting. Leilai Binding is currently a two mana. I don't even know what the card Gabe showed there is. Taryn's working on pulling it up, I believe. Generally for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle your library. Is this the new tech? Is an instant speed card from Guild to Ravnica? Gets your Asmo or a rag in this situation. This is a so this is a silly question. Yeah. Does Undergrowth have anything other... Is that, like, what Undergrowth means, or is there something else? Because uh, you know how, like, cards will be, like, randomly, be, like, yeah. flashback, like, you're supposed to know what that means? Is there an alternate way for, for sure. Underground? Undergrowth? Undergrowth is a Undergrowth. number of creature cards in your graveyard. Oh, so that's what... Okay. Yeah. I was... Yeah, I can't get Ragavan. It has to be a black card. has to be a black card. Oh, yeah, it has to be a black card. So it's only... The only two... It's only probably grabbing an Asmo. Or a daredevil, I guess. Yeah, like it's like daredevils at four. 
Yeah. It's not impossible for the deck to get there. Right here, like, if, for example, say Gabriel were to get period, and, like, that's online. Could you have these epicures? Uh, there is a Solitude now in Ryan's hand. Ren's going to ping away another threat. Ren's going to come back down. Ping the other threat away. Gabriel now with a lot of foods. Treasure? I believe that's what that token is. Can imagine it being much else. Treasure. Okay, yep. Yeah. Or it was the, the blood token. Yes. I believe that's what it actually was. Yep. Yeah. I guess this card, we get another food, we get two Daredevils back. Buying both those cards back, making foods for free. Asmo. You're gonna dress down the Asmo, makes sense. But Ryan's up just on the back foot here. Playing catch up is really hard when all of your spells are either pitches or yeah. don't stick around. So, oh, this is where like I think you can find Leyline Binding to be a really good card against these artifact decks. One of the hard things, like about enchantment type removal effects, like damage fear, like all those type effects. Is once they're removed, they get their permanent back. But when you're playing against that, it's like generally token based. A lot of times you can kind of get rid of tokens for free. Um, but our first look at Leyline Binding, especially at least up here on the screen, it's got Flash, which is super relevant. Flash has been like one of the craziest parts of the card. This, for example, one of the issues with Prismatic Ending and why people were playing March at the time is instant speed over sorcery speed being so relevant. Um, but cost one less for each basic land type among lands you control, four color, now five color ish. Mm -hmm. um, gets to do that pretty easily. And then when it enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent opponent control until Leyline Mining leaves the battlefield. Um, another quick thing to note about Leyline Mining that it, and the reason I brought up Dampy Fear is it works the same way. Um, for example, if you were to have a creature with counters on it, um, one of the bad things about getting it exiled under one of those when it comes back, it has no counters. If Leyline Binding targets it and gets removed before it goes under Leyline Binding, it will actually get put under nothing and keep all your counters. Yep. Or relevant things that you might have attached to said creature. If you're playing like Bogles or something, for example, and like you get dressed down in Leyline Binding. Yep. Well, if you protect it or like get rid of the Leyline Binding, you're not going to lose your creature. And it won't lose any of the equipment that's attached to it. Rick, Tandy asks if you can explain the interaction between food tokens and his belly. Um. So first of all, food starts digesting at the mouth. Okay. Science lesson. Uh, I, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop right there. I, I thought I thought the mitochondria was the powerhouse of the cell, though. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all I know from so I know. my schooling. But remember, Hello, Chad. Candy. Hope you're doing well. Glad to see you popping up in the chat. Here, bully me. Very, very cool. But love. Cash money, baby. So, Ryan, with Ice Fang Quaggles coming down, being able to draw some cards, the Death Touch effect is an effect for the other Ice Fang Quaggles, counting as the permanent. They don't count themselves, but when other Ice Fang Quaggles are in play, they count as snow permanents for each other. So the Death Touch ability is active with two snow permanents in terms of lands in play with the island and mountain. Yorion looking really good here too. Especially with like Leyline Binding, you'd be able to get rid of the Saga token. You have to kind of struggle with like the Asmo coming back, but hopefully at mm -hmm. that point you were like playing with a Teferi or something. Yeah, well, Ryan does have the Solitude. Ryan also has the... Uh, besage you in hand. Uh, also, important to note for Gabriel is that he has actually got Ryan to cycle these two dress downs. So your sagas aren't going to get blown up for free. Yep. Um, that's one of the big upsides of playing dress down against these decks and why you might see Ryan have them in the deck. More important than like turning off Asmo for a turn and stuff like that is the fact that like, I get to play a two mana, kill all your constructs and draw a card. And draw, you know, for two mana at flash speed. 
Um, Gabe's eyeing down the Soul Guide Lantern. Is that really... Oh, and Relic, okay. Soul Guide Lantern or a Relic? I think Relic? Maybe? What's... I believe your idea is like maybe you feel I'm um, getting this Ren off the battlefield isn't really for you and you might want to have an insurance plan also to draw a card and that might be more white relevant yeah. which could be the argument for Soul Guide Lantern over it. Um, yeah, but um, Ryan still has that Emrakul in hand, right? So he's probably yes. that, concerned yeah. with shutting it. There's super relevant things to still be talking about. Um, Relic's weird to grab. Because as we learned before, I already forgot the card name, but the one that goes fetches out a creature with that in our deck, getting rid of our graveyard kind of sucks. Yeah, traverse the open world. Yeah. Where a Soul Guide Lantern can come down, exile a card that has been now, and hopefully lower the delirium amount that we have for our Emrakul, and then like maybe we'll see at some point here soon that he just pops it immediately. Ryan is getting relatively close to doing it so yeah. kind of far away. And the relativity is like, yeah. we play an Omnath, we're like almost there. Yeah, currently, I believe Ryan is at 10 total out of the 13. Uh, Ryan's got five lands and then enchantment, planeswalker, land, creature, nothing. It's gone. I lied. <laughs> I'm sorry. Important thing to know here is now Ryan has fetched up the third snow land. So that means Ice Fang Quaddle dies. The other one's still active with Death Touch. So Gabriel's going to want to remove them both before he starts swinging the constructs. Although huh, he's getting the construct in and removing an Ice Fang so he can't draw with them later off of a Yorion still might be relevant enough to like just go ahead and get in there. The, the easiest way to remove them is going to be just sacrificing foods to Asmo. That, we could do that too. Yeah, just just cook, yeah, just, just cook them up. Boom. Just cook them up. Yeah. Another Asmo. Lo lo lock and load. Did you guys see this? Another Asmo. Uh, that's what he was saying. Asmo's going to be able to remove there. Oh, sorry. That's not, it's okay, King. I believe in you. You got a lot going on over there. I don't know what it's like to sit in that seat. And the, the really big, quote, drawback is that the... Uh, that's much more damage than that would be if I'm not mistaken damage. one of that's... these constructs can't attack no they've been out have they been yeah out? yeah and, but that should have been 12 damage though. yeah it did because it, it pops in two lanes for taps it's, yeah okay oh. i'm i'm faded it's fine i'll okay. save you one of them My tools aren't right. Oh, unless Ryan just said besage, he was going to besage you one. Yeah. Before. Oh yeah, who got game one? Ryan got Ryan, game one. Ryan got game one. Yeah, I I believe yeah. So we see the last title go to the moon. I mean, one guy saw two, one guy besaged you. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they figured it out. Some of the issues when, you know, players know how to talk to each other. Yes. True. They don't show everything. <laughs> they just go, I'm going to do this in the graveyard. Yep. And you're like, okay, well. Yep. I, at least you understand what's happening. And there's Baby Tough. It's fair. It comes down. See what's going to happen. Uh, it three, ooh. Oh, that's a ooh. really good play from Ryan there. Um. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. This is fun. You like, you like what's happening? I like what's happening. I take it away. What's happening? Come so, on. with the Leland Binding coming up, the Asmo would come back into play. Legendary Roll would kick in for Gabe, having to sacrifice one of the Asmos. Uh, however, there's still an ETB that goes off the stack, which gets the other cookbook. It puts three cookbooks in play, three, cookbook, uh, three Daredevils in Gabe's hand. Gabe is one time sieve away from just going and taking two turns really easily and at this point game might just be uh well land's not great for him he's not he's probably not happy about that so one more important thing there yeah is that ryan 
where I feel like some people would snap off that ley line binding to get rid of the asthma immediately is actually going to save it in case the time C yep. starts happening, which Gabriel still could be able to like get the turns loaded up, but he won't be able to set up in like an infinite amount if like mm -hmm. that's his goal in the long run here. But all I'm saying is Gabe's playing a really cool deck that could play Painter Servant. And make all the creatures black so he could fetch anything out that he wanted with that card. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, chat. <laughs> well, you see Teferi getting attacked. And the other three are going at Ryan. Let's see what I wonder Ryan likes to do here. We have a Leyline Binding. If we want. This is going to take the Asmo. Teferi is going to go down. One game tapping all three, just two like, tapping all three. Say, I'm gonna do this three times and then I'm gonna hard cast one. It's just like whenever you see an arc like Phoenix get cast <laughs> for its alternate mana cost. Whenever you look at uh, you know, devil like uh, Oval Chase Daredevil, I think, huh, why is it so beefy? It is a beefy boy. It's a four mana does like comes back to your hand whenever an art artifact comes into play. But it's just naturally a four two. Oh man, it smacks. <laughs> yeah. It ain't it ain't here to mess around. So we have another ley line binding in hand. We have an Emrakul still that we've known about since the beginning of the game from Athanasis. For both players. Not just us commentators. Simracle's known. Yorion gets purchased. A little concerning for Gabe, it might mean we have a pitch of solitude potentially or whatnot, but we also have a Besaidu in hand for any major artifact that we need. Taryn's got the giggles over there. Oh no, don't tell me that we're here. I can't take it if we're getting shrapnel blasted. I mean, well. Would you like to? I, you like I, to hear, I can't take it. Would you like to hear? Uh, I don't need Ryan to be on the back end again. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna have to find out if uh, Solitude can exile our Ren Six to gain five life. <laughs> There's not. <laughs> oh, look at him. Jeez. Although, if Ryan gets to the point that he casts Emrakul, somebody might be shrapnel blasting themselves. But. We might not get there. No. Uh, that's a hard cast, Yorion. Gonna make two foods. Oh, he does have a ton of food, so he can just gain a lot of life every turn. Sack to get the uh, artist. Yep. Blast, here. blast. Blast, blast. Literally just throws him Oh, down. man. Ryan had a solitude in hand, too, I'm pretty sure, but didn't have another white card. Correct. Yeah. Uh, tournament number two of the Apex Invitational. This yep. one's held here at Apex, of course. Why we're here. Brought you by Apex. Castle had there. Uh, Taryn can find the winner for me real quick um, of people that have already qualified, which is super exciting for them. Um, we'll have basically two every weekend for the most part. Mm -hmm. Some of the holidays, there will not be one for obvious reasons, um, especially the fact that this will lead up into like Christmas this area and stuff like that and go through the new year. Obviously, we're not going to have one on Christmas. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? If you come dressed as Santa, you're automatically qualified. But that that, that is a joke, chat. That's a joke. But oh, I believe but a lot of the stores are going to try to start streaming their events, which is really exciting. So if you want more content, um, reach out to them, bother them, pester them. Yep. Say get out there. We want to see these matches. Sunday football. Who cares? We got Sunday Magic Gathering. True. That thoughts he's ripping the uh, the Teferi as Gabe has seen just turns into a three mana boomerang, which feels fine. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't. It feels like okay. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a boomerang. It's not a boomerang. It's a non land permanent. It's a baby Teferi. Yeah, but it's still it's like three mana bouncer thing draw a card. You will have to put respect on Teferi's name. It's ended Terran's modern career. <laughs> it, it is Teferi as a card the static ability is just too good it, it really is. is but getting back on board here 
we finally see an academy manufacturer. We haven't seen one yet. It's such a house. And we haven't even seen one in its hand, but it gets discarded, so it might not matter. Um, but there's a time thief. Gabe, I, I, I understand. Gabe has an eight. Oh, the tech. Yeah, you. What's that? you want I, know, I did statement. I I didn't I didn't see I didn't see. Look at iron. Gabe. He's holding me. He's like, do I yeah. get to bring him back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you haven't seen on Earth before, return target creature card with man value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. There's no other downside. Um, like some will come back with like a counter, a negative counter, like persist puts a negative counter on it. Can't target legendaries, etc. But Academy Manufacturer, if you were to create a clue, food, or treasure token, instead create one of each. So if you create one, you create the other two. No matter how you. Got it. If you have multiples in, they do it times three. Times three. It's nine. <laughs> it, it goes. It goes wild. It's exponential. You go to the power. So you get three of each, which adds up to nine, and then if you have another one in. We're all the way to twenty-seven. And we just keep going to infinity and beyond. As Buzz Lightyear once said. I don't get no gas for that one. No, no, no. Because it's it's not infinite. Uh, that's the whole issue. It goes to eighty-one. It goes to eighty-one. Goes to 81. 81 which, yeah. You have infinite turns, so it goes it's, it, it, it's actually very finite because you'd eventually run out of cards in your library. That's not Gabe Smart. He's got a he's got a what's the artifact that puts your stuff back? Oh, that's a great elixir question. of immortality. Oh, yeah, you got one of those in there. You think so? No. I'm, I'm gonna fact check you. I'm, 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 I'm coming for you. I hope so. A little part mm -hmm. of me hopes so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, no. Connor fact checked me, no. and there's no elixir of immortality. There, there is not. There is not. There's only one time seep, though. There's only one time seep. So, uh, turns out you only need one. That's true. Yeah. It might be a thing where Gabe's kind of found out he likes to do just more of the aggro y plan and stuff like that, and felt like the combo might be too clunky to have multiple. It's, I can definitely see. Maybe, maybe for him, the combo is just. If it gets there, it gets there. Yeah. I'm not holding my breath. Yeah. Because Academy Manufacturer, it does so much already. Like, you don't need the combo. Making the treasures, the clues, and the foods. Like, foods help you in burn. Mm -hmm. Like, basically wins you that matchup if you get there. Um, the clues help you against control type decks because you're putting cards in your hand. They can't really deal with it. And treasures, obviously, being mana fixing or anything that you need to other than that. Look. Gabe's really thinking about this time Steven hand. Can you fire it off? You do have to worry about it more now because of blade line binding. Mm-hmm. Um being able to answer it immediately. Granted, looking at Ryan's Ryan's hand, we know blade line binding isn't the problem. And unholy heat is only dealing two damage right now. Also, we come to the thing of well, like no cards in hand. Yeah. So if this top deck's not great, the track kind of starts to stall. Well, but the, it might be able to get there anyway. The guarantee is a artifact one or zero off the saga. Cause we get three more off saga based off of a top deck. Mm-hmm. This is happening at end step, I believe. So this is happening on Gabriel's end step, so it'll stay in play throughout the turn. Yeah. So if Gabriel were to make another construct here, it would just die. Yeah. Um, one of the cool interacting things that you can do with Dress Down is play it on an end step. It won't go away to the next end step because the end step's already started. One of the things that some players that may be new to Magic in general kind of the key wording on cards. Um. Some cards work whenever your turn actually ends. Mm -hmm. This one's at the start of end step. Alright, so we know Gabe has a mountain. He can discard one card. And only get a food. Mm-hmm. Because if constructs were able to stay and there was no dress down active, he probably kills him. I don't know the exact math because you'd have to sack a lot of artifacts to get that additional turn. But the one construct would have been really big to hit him. 
and then plus the extra damage you would have from your Epicure and the other card, the Manufacturer, that I don't know if you would have had enough damage to finish it. Um, Dresstown kind of came in and then made me have to not do the math, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, on the end step, it's going to go make three, make three, take an extra turn. Oh. Yep, there it is. Still on the end step. It's still Gabe's turn. Yep. Make two, two, and two. Yep, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan gives it over. Yep, man, you got it. Yep. So, 